Hi guys, this is Vineet and I welcome you to this video. Today's video topic is Integration Services ETL Project Tutorial. This is uh, part 11 of this video series. If you haven't watched the earlier uh, 10 parts of this video series, I would highly recommend you to please go ahead and watch those parts uh, before you can start with this part because uh, watching the previous parts are very much essential uh, before you can continue with this part so i have a integration services playlist which you can find on my channel page you can go to that playlist and watch out all the videos from starting till the end to gain better clarity now let's start with the part 11 of this video before we proceed ahead i would request you guys to please go ahead and subscribe to my channel there is a subscribe button below this video click on that subscribe button it will give you a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future and upcoming videos so let me give you five seconds guys please go ahead and subscribe to my channel right away i'm waiting guys so guys i hope you must have uh, subscribed to my channel by now if yes let's proceed ahead guys if you want to make any contributions or donations to us uh, uh, there are two options available to you you can send in your uh, donations via upi uh, the upi code is given on the right hand side on this slide which you can scan uh, to make the payment to us and the other way to make donations and offerings uh, is to go to the below top mate link uh, topmate.io link you can open this link uh, to make us your donations and offerings now let's come back to today's topic uh, which is integration services ctl project tutorial uh, part 11 and uh, there are some points to remember while watching this video please watch this video till the end to gain better clarity of the concept and if it's possible for you please watch this video twice or as many times as you like until the concept gets clear to you perform any exercises in your test and lab environments only do not do not touch any production environment or production databases and guys we would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos so please do share any comments feedbacks and suggestions now let's come back to today's topic which is the we were building the etl project and this is part 11 of this video series now let me take you to notes quickly all right so in our previous video we were working on preparing and creating our deployment bundle and we were done with uh, three of the tasks. The task one is to create working folders and environment variables. Uh, the task two is to create the deployment project. And task three was to add packages and other files to the project. So we are done till this point. And in this part 11, we will start off with task four, which is adding the package configuration. And finally, we will test the updated package uh, after that. All right. So let's uh, discuss on adding the package configuration now if we talk about this task in this task we will add a configuration to each package so before i proceed ahead let me open up visual studio where we were building this uh, integration services project so let me quickly open that up okay so we were working with deployment tutorial and this was our project that we were creating so let's open up this project so once this project gets opened, we will uh, start off with the task four, which is adding the package configuration. All right, so the task is open. Now let's go back to notes. So in this task, adding the package configuration, we will add the configuration to each package. So far, if we take a look at Visual Studio, we have two packages added in here. First one is the data transfer package and second one is the load XML data package. So two packages are there. So we will add configuration to each package uh, in this task. All right. And uh, configurations update the value of uh, package properties. So if we talk about the configurations, configuration basically updates the value of package properties and uh, the package objects at runtime. So whatever we do configure under the configurations, basically these configurations update the value of the package properties or package objects at runtime. Now, integration services, if we talk about, provides a variety of uh, configuration types. You can store configurations in environment variables. So, let me discuss on this. We can store configurations 
in environment variables so this is one place where you can uh, store the configurations in environment variables the other place you can store the configuration is the registry entries you can store the configuration there as well and you can also store the configurations in the user defined you can store the configurations in user defined variables as well so this is third place where you can store the configurations and we can also store the configuration in the sql server tables this is another place where we can store the configurations and we can also store the configuration inside the xml files all right so these are some of the places where you can store in the configuration and basically to provide the additional functionality integration services supports the use of indirect configurations which means that you you can use an environment variable to specify the location of the configuration so we can use environment variables to specify the location of the configuration which in turn specifies the actual values so there's an indirect way as well and this is an additional flexibility where integration services lets you make use of the indirect configuration which means that you can use the environment variables to specify the location of the configuration which in turn specifies the actual values now the packages in the deployment tutorial project that we are building use a combination of xml configuration files so we are talking about this project that we are building so in this project this project will use the combination of xml configuration files and it will also use the indirect configuration as well where the environment uh, variable variable will uh, point to this xml configuration file now an xml configuration file if we talk about can include configuration for multiple properties so we can use the xml files to include the configuration for multiple properties so let me write that down an xml file can be used to include the configurations for multiple properties all right and uh, when it is appropriate uh, these properties can be referenced by multiple packages and if we talk about this tutorial we will use separate configuration file for each package so we we have two packages here so for both the packages we will use a separate configuration file let's move back move back to notes now if you talk about the configuration files these frequently contain sensitive information such as connection strings so if you talk about the configuration files these frequently contain sensitive information and this sensitive information includes uh, including the connection strings which basically lets you connect to a database as this configuration files contains the sensitive information then uh, therefore it is suggested that you should use an access control list to restrict access to the location or folder where you store these configuration files and only give access to users or accounts that are permitted to run the packages so configuration files shouldn't be accessible by anyone you should use the windows security permissions to uh, give permissions only to those users who have to run the packages that users should only be able to access the configuration files now there are two packages uh, that are there in our project first one is the data transfer package and second one is the load xml data package so these packages data transfer and load xml data that we have added to the deployment tutorial project in the previous task need configurations to run successfully after they are deployed to the target servers so once these packages are deployed to the target servers these need these tasks okay now to implement these configurations uh, we will first create the direct configuration for the xml configuration files then what we will do we will create the xml configuration files after that first of all we need to create the indirect configuration now we will also create two configuration files uh, which we had uh, referred to in the environment variables uh, let me show that to you uh, under the control panel we had configured uh, the environment variables in our previous video so if you go to system and 
inside system if you go to advanced system settings environment variables and under the system variables yesterday we had configured two environment variables data transfer and the load xml data each of these variables are pointing to data transfer config and the first one data transfer variable is pointing to data transfer config dot dts config file and the second variable load xml data is pointing to load xml uh, data config dot dts config file so these files are not created yet although these environment variables are pointing to these two files and what we will do now is uh, we will create these two configuration files the data transfer config dot dts config and the load xml data dot dts config and uh, these files will contain the name value pairs that update the properties in packages that specify the location of the data and log files used by the package all right so let's go ahead and create these xml files now later as a step in the deployment process we will update the values in the configuration files to reflect the new location of the files on the destination computer but here our source and destination will be same so still we will try to configure a different destination on the same computer so let's proceed ahead now integration services recognizes that the data transfer config dot dts config and load xml data dot dts config are dependency of the dependency of these two projects data transfer dtsx and load xml data dtsx packages and uh, these are the configuration files uh, related to these uh, two packages basically these files if we say are dependencies of the data transfer and uh, load xml data packages and automatically includes the configuration files when you create the deployment bundle in the next lesson so if we talk about integration services it automatically recognizes that these configuration files are dependencies of these packages data transfer and load xml data and uh, will automatically include these configuration files whenever we create the deployment bundle uh, which we'll create in next lesson and we will show you how the configuration files get automatically included now let's proceed ahead and create a indirect configuration which we were talking about and we are creating the in uh, indirect configuration for the data transfer package this one for this package we are creating an indirect configuration now first of all we need to check the project current deployment model and we need to set it to package deployment model so how to do that so we need to change if it's uh, under the project deployment model we need to change it to package deployment model so how can we do that so if we go to the project menu over here right there's an option of converting it to package deployment model so we need to click on convert to package deployment model right now the package is in project deployment model so let's click on this it will give you some warnings let's click on okay to proceed so it's converting the all the packages into the package deployment model all right so all the tests have passed let's click on okay and we can convert it back to project deployment model as well but right now the project is in package deployment model indicated here as well package deployment model inside the solution explorer you need to double click on the data transfer .dtsx package to open it so let me move more properties here so we have these two packages so what we need to do here is we need to open up the data transfer .dtsx package let's double click on it to open it so it's opening up the data transfer .dtsx package once you double click on it it will open the package in the ssi ssis designer window so once your package gets opened right now it's trying to load the package now your package is open it contains these two steps right it was creating and truncating a table and then it is transferring a data to that table now in the ssis designer window click anywhere in the background of the control flow design surface so we are on the control flow tab so click anywhere on the back side apart from controls you can click anywhere on the back side of the design surface now on the ssis menu on the ssis menu you need to click the package configurations where we can get that option so we don't see an ssis menu maybe right click if you right click you will also get the package configuration option right otherwise uh, i'm not sure we are not getting the okay here we get the ssis menu so under that you can select the package configuration as well 
So if you click on package configuration, it will open up the con package configuration organizer. So in the package configuration organizer dialog box, select enable package configurations. So this is already checked. If it is not already selected, you need to check this checkbox. Now, after that, you need to click on the add button. When you click on add, it will open up a package configuration wizard. It will show you the welcome page of the package configuration wizard. You need to click on the next button. Let's click on next. Now on the select configuration type page, select XML configuration file, which is already selected in the configuration type list. Other options are also given over here. So for our project, we are selecting XML configuration file in the co configuration type list. And select the configuration location is stored in an environment variable option. So you need to select this option. Configuration location is stored in an environment variable. So select this option and and type data transfer where, where we can type that so we need to specify the environment uh, variable information over here right once you select the second option if you scroll down over here you need to specify the environment variable so what is the name of the environment variable if you go to system uh, yesterday we had defined the environment variable so the name of the environment variable is data transfer so let's put in that uh, variable data transfer let's go back to the project so variable name is data data transfer is the variable name otherwise if you put a drop down you can select from a list of variables that uh, gets auto populated so select data transfer from the environment variables all right now once you select that data transfer uh, environment variable what you need to do you need to click on next button and basically to make this environment variable available in this list uh, you may have to restart computer sometimes after adding the variable in the environment variables uh, dialog box uh, in the system settings so once you add a new variable over here you need to restart the system in case you want that uh, list to get auto populated over there in the visual studio so right now the list is auto populating for me showing me the data transfer and the other variable load xml data as well for now we are selecting the data transfer variable now let's click on next button and on the completing the wizard page so we are on the completing the wizard page uh, type the data transfer ev configuration so data transfer environment variable configuration let me name that ev configuration or environment variable configuration let me name it like this so we have put in the name in the configuration name box and uh, we can also review the configuration contents so it is giving us the name of the configuration the type of configuration which is indirect configuration file and it is also listing us the environment variable name which is data transfer so once you review this information in the preview pane let's click on finish so once you click on finish you can also close this package configurations organizer dialog box so we have configured the what we have done is we have created an indirect configuration for the data transfer package now let's create the configuration or the xml configuration for the data transfer package so far what we have done is we have created an indirect configuration by going to the package configuration organizer so th this is the indirect configuration that we have created right now what we will create is we will create the xml configuration for the data transfer package so for the same package we will create the xml configuration now now in the solution explorer double click the data transfer.dtsx we have already double clicked it and uh, the package is currently opened now in the ssis click anywhere in the background of the control flow design surface we are on the control flow tab we can click anywhere on the background and we need to go to the ssis menu under the ssis menu click the package configurations so this will open up the package configuration organizer now in the package configuration organizer dialog box uh, select the enable package configuration so that is already selected and we will add the second configuration let's click on add button and on the welcome page of the package configuration wizard we need to click on next so let's click next now on the select configuration type page select xml configuration file so that is already selected in the configuration type list and we need to click on the browse button over here so here we are specifying the configuration uh, settings directly which will be which will be stored in the xml file so click on the browse button and what we need to do is we need to select the on the c drive uh, we had created a folder yesterday 
so that folder name is deployment tutorial we need to select this folder and we need to type the name of the configuration file which will be data transfer config and uh, the extension of this file will be dts config and uh, this file is basically referred to by the environment variables that we had created earlier so if you look, take a look at these environment variables data transfer it is referring to data transfer config dot dts config that we are creating right now all right so let's go back to visual studio so we are naming this file data transfer you make sure that name is uh, correct so transfer r is also missing so data transfer config is the correct name and dts config will be the extension now after you specify the file name you need to click on the save button and on the select configuration type box we need to click on the next button now we are on the select properties to export page now what we need to do is we need to expand a particular section which is the data transfer section over here now on this select properties to export page expand the data transfer it is already expanded though expand the connections manager expand the deployment tutorial log and properties so under that if you expand deployment tutorial log you will find the properties and if you expand the properties you will find the property name connection string so let's select that connection string so select the connection strings checkbox and within the connections manager expand new customers now guys uh, we have selected the connection string under the connection manager deployment tutorial log properties and connection string we have selected now under the connection managers we need to expand the new customers so do we have any new customer so we have this new customer option expand on that and then select the connection string box under the properties let's select the connection string over here all right so we have checked two check boxes under the deployment tutorial log and the new customer section we have selected the connection string options now let's click on next and on the completing the visit page uh, type the data transfer configuration in the configuration name box let me type that type data transfer configuration so data transfer you can take it as one word if you like configuration all right so after typing the data transfer configuration in the configuration name box uh, review the content of the configuration so you can review this section as well so we have selected two connection string properties one is under the new customer section one one is under the deployment tutorial log section and this will be the file that will be used to store the configuration uh, basically these two connection strings now let's click on the finish button we have reviewed the configuration let's click on finish so two configuration is there first one is an indirect xml configuration and this one is the direct xml configuration file all right now in the package configuration organizer dialog box verify the data transfer ev configuration is listed first so this this configuration the data transfer ev should be listed first if not you can use this move arrow icons to move it uh, to the first location right so we need to make sure the data transfer configuration is listed second and the data transfer ev configuration is listed first now after you confirm you can click on close now what we have done we have created a direct xml configuration for the data transfer package now let's move on to next step we will do the same for the other package as well let's save it we have created an indirect configuration for data transfer dot package and a direct configuration as well now let's do the same for the load xml data package so we need to open up the package in the solution explorer so double click on the load xml data dot okay once your package is open in the ssis designer click anywhere in the background of the control flow design surface and go to the ssis menu and select the package configuration now in the package configuration wizard click on the add button although this option is not enabled over here but yeah uh, we need to enable the package configuration in order to enable the add button so after that we can click on the add button and on the welcome page of the package configuration wizard let's click on the next option and on the select configuration type page select the xml configuration file so we have selected the xml configuration file in the configuration type list and we need to select the second option configuration location is stored in an environment variable option 
and if you scroll down you need to provide the name for the environment variable and we had created an environment variable earlier which is load xml data let's try to look at that so this is the environment variable that we have to use so we have selected that environment variable in the list now after that you can click on next and you need to provide the name for the configuration so let's name it as load uh, xml data this is environment variable configuration so let me name it like this all right so load xml data ev configuration we have given the name in the configuration name box and uh, review the contents of the configuration so this is the name of the configuration this is the indirect configuration file and uh, the environment variable name that we are using is load xml data now let's click on the finish button and the configuration is now added so this is finished and you can click on the close button as well so far we have created an indirect conf uh, configuration now let's create a direct xml configuration now in the same window you can go to uh, the extension ssis and select the package configuration it will open up the same dialog box and in the package configuration organizer dialog box which is this one you need to uh, make sure that this one option is selected and you need to click on the add button after that and this will open up a welcome page for you you need to click on the next button and on the select configuration type page you need to select the xml configuration file in the configuration type list and uh, click on the browse button over here and you need to select the same folder deployment tutorial here you need to specify the name of the xml configuration file where the, all the settings will be stored so let's name it as load xml data config should be similar to the name of uh, the item uh, environment variable is pointing to this one is pointing to load xml data config.dds config let's go back load xml data config dot dds config is the name now once you type in the file name and you need to click on the save button after that now on the select configuration type page we need to click on the next button now we need to select uh, two of the properties so on the select properties to export page expand the load xml data which is this one this is expanded under that you need to expand the executables and you need to further expand load xml data and then expand on properties after expanding on properties select the xml source dot xml data let's see if we have such properties so this is the one xml source dot xml data and we will also select xml source dot xml schema definition check boxes now these two are the only items which we need to select then click on next after that then on the completing the wizard page uh, type the load xml data configuration so to give the name to the configuration let's type that load xml data configuration load xml data configuration in the configuration name box and review the content of the configuration so this is the name of the configuration type will be configuration file and new configuration file will be created and configuration will be created in this file and uh, these are the two properties that we are storing in inside the configuration files and these properties can be changed now let's click on the finish button now we can see these two properties now in the package configuration organizer dialog box verified that the load xml data ev configuration is listed first and the load xml data configuration is listed second otherwise you can use the arrow buttons to make it up and down now let's click on the close button configuration is done now go to file and click on save all so that all your items can be saved now we are done with the step four of this uh, tutorial we have added the package configuration to both the packages the data transfer and load xml data two packages were there so we have added the configuration to both of these packages now let's see we are on task five now where we will test the updated packages let's move on to this task which is uh, in which we are going at with the testing of updated packages and before we proceed at uh, where we will create the deployment bundle to which can be used to install the tutorial packages on the destination computer we should test the packages first now in this task we will run the packages this particular task we will run the packages and the packages are data transfer dtsx and load xml data dot dtsx that uh, we had added to the de deployment tutorial project 
and then extended with the configuration. So we have added the configurations as well. Uh, in addition to these two projects uh, or packages, we have added the configurations. Now, when the package is run, each executable in the package becomes a green color as it completes successfully. All right. So when a package run, the each executable in the package become a green color when it runs successfully. When all are green, the package has completed successfully. You can also view the package execution progress on the progress tab. And if the packages do not run successfully, you must first fix them before you go on to the next lesson. So first of all, we need to do the testing of package. They should be running fine. Let me close this load XML data dot DTSX. Now to run the data transfer package, this one, if we want to run. On the solution explorer, click the data transfer DTSX and on the debug menu so we have a debug menu and we can click on start debugging to execute this package now after the package has completed running on the debug menu click on stop debugging so first let's start debugging so it is saying build succeeded so i think it is not giving me the option to stop the debugging let me open this package and then try to debug it so once the your package is open Let's go to a debug menu and click on start debugging. I think now it has started running. Okay. Now the package tasks are running. So first task is running over here. So first task has failed, which is create out and create table. Now we can stop the debugging. We need to fix out these errors. So it is giving us an error. Create out and create table error. Now we need to check that out. So we need to go through the individual task. I have stopped the debugging. Let me check. So if we double click on this task, let's see what it is doing. So what it is doing is uh, it is selecting from adventureworks.sys.tables. So we don't have adventureworks uh, database over here. Instead, we have adventureworks 2022. So this is the SQL that is uh, being executed. And the connection is being made to the adventureworks database which is uh, actually not there so let's try to make the connection first and then we will modify the script accordingly so i've opened sql server let's wait for it to open basically our package should uh, run without an issue before we can build a deployment bundle so the testing is going on let's connect to a default instance of uh, sql server here we have uh, adventureworks database with a different name this is 2022 version so it has a name adventureworks 2022 Let's try to make connection to that. So it's an OLEDB connection over here. Let's try to connect to this uh, database. So I've selected new connection over here. Also, let me see this SQL statement, what it is. So let me copy this and uh, paste it against the AdventureWorks 2022 database to see if it is valid. So I've pasted the statement. So what it is doing is it is selecting from AdventureWorks sys tables. I don't know whether it has a sys uh, schema. So we don't have any sys schemas over here. Not even in the AdventureWorks uh, data warehouse to run 22 database. We don't have sys schema. So SQL is looking a little incorrect to me. So I think it can be checked in the MSDB database. I think so. So yeah, it has. Uh, we can check it there under inside the MSDB database if we have any such tables. So let's execute just this part. So basically this MSDB table lists out all the tables we have in the system. And it also depends whether that is a user table or not. So apart from MSDB, we model cannot be used master. Master is also, I think, cannot be used for this master sys tables. Let's see. No, no, it should be under the MSDB. So let's select MSDB over here. So what it is doing is the script is creating a table called uh, high income customers let's see whether we have uh, such table inside the adventure works 20 database so dbo dot uh, high income customers we we don't have uh, such table high income customers over here under the dbo schema we don't have such tables so we will create a table if the table is uh, exist it will just truncate the table if table already exist it will create the table if table does not exist it will just create a table all right 
So yeah, I think this looks correct. And let's try to make connections to the AdventureWorks Studio and Twenty database. So let's click on New Connection Box, and this is a connection to the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse Studio and Twenty Two. So we need to make a new connection. So let's click on the New Connection Box, and we need to provide the server name. Server name. Let's try to retrieve the list over here. It is taking some time to retrieve the list. I'm pausing this video in the meantime. So it has not given me anything. So let's take the server name as localhost. Or maybe we can give the machi machine name as well. So let's try to give the machine name. Let's see what machine name do we have. So this is the name of the machine. So this is the name of the server. You can copy that out and put it there as other box. Is it there? All right, the authentication we want to use is with the Windows authentication. That would be okay. Now select, let's select a database name. So we see Adventure Focus 2022 over there. So let's select that and click on OK to make the database connection. And uh, we can test the connection as well, but I think it should be okay. There was a test a connection button over there. So let's select this connection, Adventure Focus 2022. Let's click OK. And after that, you need to modify the SQL a little bit. It is uh, not adventureworks.sys.database, but uh, MSDB should be the one. MSDB sys.tables. If you find that table, then it will uh, truncate that table. Otherwise, it will create that table. Now, let's click on OK. And let's try to debug this uh, package. Uh, let's click on save all and try to debug this package start debugging. Let's see if it runs fine So it has failed again. Okay, so let me try to debug it. Let's see what it says So it is giving us some errors over here in the output window Let's try to copy these errors on our notepad file. Let's try to see what these errors are indicating So it is saying that the packages is attempting to configure from the XML file. So let's see whether we have these uh, configuration files present over there in the deployment tutorial folder. So on the C drive, let's try to locate these uh, files. So we do have the data transfer config dot DTS config file over here. Let's try to take a look at the SQL script once again. Let's try to stop the package and try to properly configure the SQL script. So under the create section, we need to create table. That is correct. Okay, let's see at the end where it truncates the table. So truncate table. So this should be the table name. Let's click on OK. Let's try to start debugging the package. So first step has completed successfully. And the second step is executing. So the transfer data phase has failed. Now we need to check what's the issue there in the transfer data. So let's slowly click on transfer data. Okay, it has taken us to the data flow. The second step has failed. So it is taking data from the flat file source. Let's see if the flat file source is configured correctly. So flat file connection manager. So let's check the destination. So the database connection manager is showing the incorrect connection. Let's select the another connection, AdventureWorks 2022. The rest of the items are looking fine. Uh, let's see mappings. Let's cancel this out and uh, again check it. We need to select the table high income customers uh, against the AdventureWorks 2022 database. Let's click on OK. Try to look at the table high income customers, so which is this one. Okay, mappings are there. All right, let's click on OK. And let's click on the Save All option. And uh, let's go to the Control Flow section and try to debug the package. Let's try to debug the package. It should run fine. So it has given the error again. Let me try to look at the error messages. Why is it filling again? So it is uh, filling during the Create or Truncate table. If not exit, let's start from so guys, we need to correct the query a little bit. So let me go ahead and uh, stop the debugging and uh, we need to modify this step. And here we need to modify the script a little bit. Instead of MSDB, we need to select the AdventureWorks 2022. Now this looks correct. And let's click on OK and let's try to debug the package. It should run fine now.
So first step is completed. Uh, the data transfer step has failed. Let's try to collect the messages and see why it has failed. So the package is attempting to configure the DTS config uh, file, which is under the deployment tutorial, uh, this file data transfer config. So it is giving some kind of error code. So guys, I have opened the data transfer config dot DTS config file over here. I see that these paths are not looking okay to me. Uh, I think it should be this. These paths do not exist. So guys, we have made modification to certain paths after which the package has executed successfully. You can see it over here. And both the steps have executed successfully. The, so the place where we have uh, made the change is the uh, configuration file data transfer config dot dds config file. Earlier it was showing us this lengthy path and uh, these part do not exist. So it was showing path till deploying packages. So yesterday we had created the deploying packages path uh, and uh, directly under the C drive we had created this deploying packages uh, from where we had uh, used the readme file and the sample data files as well. And we need to configure the path here, C deploying packages. And uh, earlier the path was this, which is the incorrect path. And now we have modified the path. So the path is pointing to deploying packages, sample data. And the, the first path is indicating that it will create log on this path. So if we check the sample data folder, it has uh, created the created one deplo uh, deployment tutorial log file, right? We can check the log file as well. Uh, can be opened with notepad. So this is the log. And uh, similarly, we have a second path as well, uh, which we have changed. Uh, we have changed this path to this path by modifying this particular file, config file. We have uh, marked it as the deploying packages sample data and the new customer txt, where the customer txt is there from where we have uh, loaded these files to the project as well. So we have made changes to the data transfer config dot dts config after which the we have saved the file and ran the package and it has uh, run successfully so let me show you the difference you see the older paths which were longer and uh, these are not even the valid paths and these are the valid paths so this file got created and this fa file was already present uh, earlier all right and if we go to the ssis uh, window we see that we have successfully debugged the package we have started the debugging and uh, after the package has completed running on the debug menu we can click on the stop button so this has uh, tested successfully and we can do uh, save all as well all right so we have successfully tested the data transfer ddsx package all right and now let's run the other package so this one is tested successfully let's run the other package which is the load xml data package let's see if this runs successfully or not and also it will also create a file over here but we need to check whether it creates the file with the correct path or not so let's uh, start this package so it creates and truncates a table and we can check that before running the package otherwise it may fail so let's just give it a check so it is again connecting to the AdventureWorks database. So we need to select a correct database. So we need to make a new connection. Let's connect it to AdventureWorks 2022. The connection is already there. We had created it earlier. So we have connected successfully. Now we need to modify the SQL a little bit over here. So we need to specify AdventureWorks uh, 2022 over here. So let's specify that and we need to check the query. Let's check the query. In the end, there is a truncate table statement. So need to modify that as well. So it's not giving the complete path. So I think we should be okay. So it is truncating the table. Uh, we are fine over here. So let's click on okay. We have, uh, let's check this component. So it's a data flow component. Uh, checking for XML source. Again, the path is incorrect, right? So it is looking for order.xml and the path is looking a little incorrect to me path should be referring to this sample data where it should be referring to this order xml so we need to correct that so this is the order xml file let's uh, point to the correct order xml so this is the correct order xml i think we should go to c drive 
we should go to deploying packages and under that we have sample data and we have order XML. So let's select that. Similarly, we need to select the correct SST, XST location. So under the sample data, we have orders.xst. So let's select that. It is giving out some error messages, but yeah, let's uh, let's click on OK. Let's see if the package runs successfully or not. Uh, and let's check the OADB destination. That should refer to the correct database. So database is not AdventureWorks, but instead AdventureWorks 2022. If we cancel this out, we need to check the table it was referring to. It was referring to order dates by country region. So let's check order date by country region. So do we have that table? The table is not uh, created yet. But yeah, let's cancel it out. Let's give it a first one. It will fail. Then yeah, we will correct the OADB destination. Then it should run fine. So let's uh, start the package. It it will fail at certain point. So it's on the data flow section. It has failed on the OADB destination uh, point. You are showing the red mark. It is showing the red mark. So now the table is created. We can uh, stop the package and go to the OADB destination. It is referring to order dates by re country region. Order dates by country region should be the table name. So let's select the correct uh, database. Let's select order dates by country region. So this is the table we should be referring to. Let's click on OK and uh, save the package uh, here by clicking on save all. Now if we run the package, it should run fine. So let's execute this package. So it is still showing us some error messages. On the XML source, it is giving us. So it has changed changed the paths. Uh, so let's correct the path quickly. I think we we had not saved the path uh, earlier. So let's point it to correct path. So it should be under the simple data order XML. And similarly, we should be referring to this uh, orders.xst. Click on OK. Click OK and uh, first save the package and then we can execute it Le now let's start the package it should execute fine now it has failed again it is again and again uh okay i think it is picking up the path from the file the configuration file it has created so let, let me go ahead and try to modify that file so if you look inside this folder uh the deployment tutorial it has not even created the file over here right let's check the configuration for this uh, package quickly so let's check the package configuration let's see the location of the okay the file location the file is being created under the load xml data config this let's try to change the location of this file let's add the location uh, let's right click so the file should get created directly under the uh, C, uh, C drive deployment tutorial folder. So let me modify that and that's fine. Let's finish. Let's close it. Let's check the package configuration once again. So yeah, they're looking correct to us. So let's start the package. It will fail. Now it has failed on the XML data. Let me quickly check. Let's start it. So it has failed on the XML source. Uh, now let's check the file. It should have created file in the folder directly under the. So we we have this new file created. So this file is pointing to the incorrect path. So if I open it with the Internet Explorer right now, if I open the file, it is giving me these long paths which are incorrect. So I need to modify this file. So let's go ahead and quickly modify this file. So right click on it and open it with the notepad and you need to provide the path correctly. So it is pointing somewhere to deploying packages, right? And it is referring to order XML and order.xst file. You need to correct the path over here. So if you go to sample data, you can copy the path, see deploying packages, copy this path. And in the notepad where you're modifying this file, you need to correct the path over here. So path are here, C drive deploying packages up till that. You can select that and replace it with the new path. C drive deploying packages sample data. And one more, more path is there. So 
replace that path as well with the correct path now save the file quickly and this is the older file let me try to open that file again to see if it has changed yeah the new file is pointing to shorter paths which are correct one these are the invalid paths that why the your package is failing now let's go back and uh, try to run the package let's stop the package and try to run the package again it should run fine now so i've started debugging the package it has completed successfully all right so we are good here so we have tested both the data transfer packages and the load xml data packages we are done with this task and let's go back to notes so we are done with testing the updating updated packages let's go back to the visual studio and save all let's close the packages now minimize this and we are done with task five now we need to move on to step two which was uh create the deployment bundle in ssis so under that we will perform certain tasks so there will be two tasks under this so let me copy that and uh, let's work on it i think we should cover this uh step two step two which is creation and uh, creation of deployment bundle in ssis in our next video i think uh, this uh, video is long enough for now so i think we should stop here so we will create another part for this uh, tutorial series which will be integration services uh, etl project uh, tutorial part 11 all right we will create that for you and let me go back to notes and uh, next video we will cover that so please keep subscribed to my channel if you have not subscribed yet please go ahead and do so there's a subscribe button below this video click on that subscribe button it will give you a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my coming and future videos including the videos that i am creating these days on the integration services series so stay in tune uh, please do subscribe i'm giving you five seconds please go ahead and subscribe right away i'm waiting guys please go ahead and do so so guys i hope you must have subscribed by now and guys if you really like this video and if you would like to make any contributions or donations to our channel you can do so by two ways uh, on the right hand side on this slide you will see a upi code if you want to make a payment using the upi code you can use this code uh, you can scan this code using your upi app and make uh, whatever contribution you feel is good for us uh, you can contribute that amount otherwise if you don't want to pay uh, via upi you can go to the below topmate.io link you can type that link into your browser go to that uh, type that this complete link the complete link is required type that link open this page and you can uh, make a payment uh, as per your lacking uh, the payments are starting from rupees 100 and you can uh, make the payments as per your lacking whatever amount you feel good uh, you can donate to us all right guys uh, thank you so much and uh, do post in your comments feed, feedbacks and suggestions and guys in case you need the notes for this tutorial uh, so far we see that we have created around 33 pages of notes in case you need uh, need this notes file for if you are following up with the uh, if you are creating the etl tutorial and there are almost like 11 parts uh, starting with part one i was creating these notes so this has come down to around 31 pages if you need a copy of this notes you can send an email to me and uh, this uh, this note would be on paid basis if you want uh, inr 500 should be the amount so once you pay the amount i will send you the notes so in order to get the notes uh, you need to request that first so in order to request the notes please send me an email on my email address which is vrmavan at gmail.com so once i get your email uh, regarding the request for uh, etl tutorial notes uh, i will send you the payment link upon the making the payment of inr 500 you will be able to download these notes i will send you the link so please send me the request in case you need the notes for uh, this particular complete uh, etl project tutorial so guys once again i thank you so much for your time and uh, you have a wonderful day ahead thanks guys